get some uh, kind of insight also into part of what Senator Ninge said. I'm being joined by the presidential candidate of the YPP in the 2023 election. Mr. Malik Al Ado Ibrahim, he joins us virtually from Turkey. Thank you so much, Mr. Ibrahim, for joining us. Give us your insight into what is going on. You've got a lot of knowledge about military intervention, military operations, but when ECOWA says, get ECOWA standby force to stand by to restore order in Niger. What do you interpret that as? It seems your, your device is muted. If, if I muted myself. Oh. I can hear you. Can now. you hear me now? Yeah, very well. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just saying that it's it's very unfortunate that we're in this position um, as a country that has just come through a democratic process and uh, we've achieved uh, great strides. Uh, ours are not, even our democracy is not cleared and we're about to go and threaten our neighbor. Um, I, I think it's an ill-advised move. I think that we're in a position where Nigeria should be showing uh, leadership of a different kind. Um, I think our president, my president, President uh, Bola Metinubu, um, kind of projected himself, unfortunately, too early. Um, he strategized too early, and, and um, by threatening your neighbor before dialogue and negotiation, I think that was an unfortunate misstep. And it's it's we have to unwind from that position, and that's where we that's the unfortunate reality on the ground today. But with ECOWAS putting pressure. Um, our president should not yield. Um, we've got um, unanimous decisions from the Senate, from the general populace of Nigeria, that we should not go to war with Niger. And let's not forget that um, Niger was one of the only countries that supported us during the civil war. And even General Gawan, uh, one of his first moves after um, the war was ended was to go to Niger and thank the, the people of Niger for their support of Nigeria time. But we, we, we are far away from a war. We need, uh, Churchill said, we know rather than I think it's, it, it's frightfully important that we don't make that misstep. We can't afford would you describe, Mr. Ado Ibrahim, some of the steps that have been taken so far as a form of aggression or an out of war? Well, you know, when you when you threaten um, somebody saying, uh, if you don't do this, I'm coming to do that, um, that's tantamount to a declaration. Um, we have since tried to find a way to back down from it. But, you know, those that are pushing military intervention are, are really not the kinds of uh, leaders that should even uh, be doing such things. And we're talking about countries like Cote d'Ivoire, who's president is now trying to force a third term. Um, in his country, I could hardly say he's got a democracy like Nigeria has. Is it a uh, president of Togo who's taken over from his father and been president since, uh, pushing more on, on, on us? Nigeria is the power of ECOWAS. ECOWAS has no teeth without Nigeria. And we don't need to go and threaten our neighbors. So in our forefathers, in the setting up of Nigeria, said we should not go to war with our neighbors, big or small. And we must remain with that tradition in mind. Nigerians are not our enemy. We have one man that was president of Niger that's unfortunately uh, held ransom to a coup. A coup is definitely a step backwards for Africa. But to go and fight um, at our neighbor, I mean, the only country that has done that is Ukraine and Russia. And look at what's going on. It's, it's, it's a step that is, um, we just cannot afford it financially. Uh, we can't put our men in, in, and women uh, that are fighting such a war uh, for us uh, in danger. We can't afford to be killing Nigerians and Nigerians. Uh, we, we can't afford it economically. We don't have the financial tools to be able to execute a war. And we shouldn't be led into um, putting up our men and women um, that are in every state in this nation, in the army, uh, policing this country. And we want to div divert their attention um, to um, stage, um, even a show of strength would be the wrong thing. Nigeria needs to work on Nigeria's problems. Uh, when 90 days into a new into a new term, our military is just finding its feet. We got some amazing 
uh, service chiefs now that have come on board that have to know what we have. And one, one really troubling part of what I'm seeing is that um, our president, my president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, does not have a military man at his side, somebody that will give him advice um, and, and to, to really probably would advise that this is a misadventure. Um, I, I'm, I'm pleading with our president and to all uh, northern leaders and Nigerians in general to, to seek our audience with the president and, and uh, advise him that we, we, we're not at war with the Nigerian people. We may not like what's going on, but we are not at war with the Nigerian people. I, I'd like to uh, get your view for someone also who has a, a lot of knowledge on international relations. We're seeing what is happening in the West and it looks like the big boys on that, that continent are, 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 are flexing muscles. You see what is happening within Ukraine and Russia and what NATO and that engagement could have co I mean, has caused that region. You see what is happening in the Middle East or what has happened in the Middle East, the Pakistani-Israeli uh, relationship, the Arab-Israel relationship and the conflict that we have seen around the world in a regional form. What lesson can we learn? Because it looks so much that Nigeria has had its own share of um, a regional conflict that has uh, snowballed into an internal um, unrest in our nation. The, the banditry and the Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria, there are those who will say uh, you cannot uh, take away uh, the regional unrest in our, in, in our borders uh, to these. Well, uh, so the, the first mistake we would make is to think that Niger is some foreign land to us. So that's our neighbor. Um, you know, we've struggled with the IDPs from the Northeast and what it's done um, to our nation. Um, you've got people in Bono um, that have displaced all the way down to Lagos. Um, if, you, if, if we make the mistake of thinking that that's an isolated incident to, 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 to attack our neighbor at our border, um, two million people displaced coming through our borders um, into um, Nigeria will find their way all the way to the Atlantic. We, we can't afford it. We can hardly afford the 230 odd million people that we have and give them a uh, peace of mind. Um, uh, you know, we can't afford the fuel that we're paying, that the mm. price of electricity is, uh, is astronomical. Um, the dollar against the pound is 1,200. I mean, we're doing things now that are in territories that this country has never experienced. Going to even threatening war would be a, would, would certainly be a, a, a sort of a kamikaze move for our, our economy. Um, uh, I, I just don't know where the advice is coming from to um, uh, my president. Um, all I can say is that look, we we need all hands on deck to fix Nigeria. We don't need to be fixing the issues of Niger. Um, the war, if there is one, should not be. Um, one that Nigeria has been reluctant, reluctantly pushed into. We cannot fight proxy wars for France. Um, pushing us to go fight France's war is not an issue. Every African country that has francophone um, involvement has not detached the umbilical cord of colonialism from France. All right. Let, we don't let, have... Yeah. Let, 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 me, let me extract this from you quickly uh, before we wrap this up. Um, you, you call it a kamikaze movement. It does look like a shuffling with the legs uh, and you trying to dodge a body movement. It's almost impossible. I mean, when you shuffle with your legs in, in a movement uh, um, that you describe as a kamikaze kind of movement, that it has its implication. If you are President Tunobu today and you are in the saddle, Mr. Ado Ibrahim, what would you do? Well, first of all, I think that I would seek the advice of the military. If I'm not, um, we don't have a national security advisor that is um, a military man, and unfortunately so, but I'm sure he's got good advisors, but you know, uh, I would seek that advice um, to say, what are we prepared to do? Do we have a staging area? Do we have the men? Do we have the tools? Do we have the capacity? Do we have the equipment? And then do we have the funds to do this? Um, secondly, I would execute as many opportunities to dialogue within the, with the, uh, the, the, the junta in, uh, in Niger and, and give them um, an ultimatum of, of going back to the democratic pro uh, process. Let's not forget, look, uh, General Abdus Salam, um, you know, was able to, to transition into a democracy 24 years ago. He did that in 11 months and we're still enjoying that democracy today. 
So we shouldn't be um, afraid of, of pushing um, a, demo a democratic process with time right. limits, mm. giving them time to settle down and make this thing work for the Nigerian people and for the good of the West African region. Malik Ado Ibrahim, thank you so much uh, for your intervention tonight. I appreciate your thoughts and the perspectives that you have given.